Pop Up Flamby's Advent Calendar. O Y A A A A A Ha. Are you here? Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to the last day of Papa Flemmy's Advent Calendar. After that, it's vorbei, as you would say in German. It's over and yeah, it is what it is. Then you would have to wait for one more year for the next advent calendar. 10% of all wall decoration like those Bunsley fractals or Mandelbrot fractal um, wall decorations over on STEM Merge. And also this video has been sponsored by Brilliant. I found all the problems over on Brilliant actually in their community section and try them out for yourself. They are cute little algebra problems that we are going to take a look at today. So pause the video, try them out for yourself. Um, they are just cute and very small and easy to solve. But I thought I would end this on a very chill note here on the advent calendar. And now we are going to dive right in. So the first problem involves a summation of powers of two. And the way to go here is, I think, by the geometric series, that's the easiest thing you could possibly do. Let us remember what the geometric series looks like. So if we have some kind of x to the zero of power plus x to the first power plus da 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 up until x to the nth power, we can actually rewrite this, so maybe a link in the description to the corresponding video, as being nothing but 1 minus x to the n plus 1 of power divided by 1 minus x. So now we just need to identify what our n actually is, so the highest power of 2, which is 10. Okay, n is equal to 10. And also what the base is. Well, the base obviously is 2. Meaning, in our case, for um, n being equal to 10 and x being equal to 2, we are going to get that 2 to the 0th power plus dot 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 up until 2 to the 10th power is going to result in, okay, we're going to get 1 minus mm, 2 to the 10 plus 1 is nothing but 11 divided by Okay, 1 minus 2 is negative 1, which is going to result in distributing the negative sign into here in 2 to the 11th power minus 1. I mean 2 to the 10th power is 1024, so this times 2 results in 2 to the 11th power, resulting overall in 2048 minus 1, which is nothing but 2000. 47 and hence we're done quite easy right but cute <laughs> i like puzzles like those now next up is what is the value of t with those conditions given up here and it's actually really easy to find out once again so at first we know what x is it's equal to uh, 2 times t and now we are going to multiply y by 2 because we want to find out what happens if x is equal to 2y meaning overall since x is nothing but 2t this is hence equal to 2 times this quantity right here. So 2 times t over 3 minus 1. I mean 2 is not equal to 0. We can just divide both sides by it. Leaving us overall with t being hence nothing but t over 3 minus 1. We can subtract t over 3 on both sides. t thirds. So t minus t over 3. It's hence nothing but, okay, expanding this t by 3 over 3 results overall in 2t divided by 3, being hence nothing but negative 1. And now multiplying both sides by the reciprocal of 2 thirds is going to result overall in t being nothing but negative 3 over 2. And hence we are done. You probably got that right too. Now, next up, what is the sum of all positive integers n satisfying square root of 3 being greater, uh, less than n? being less than square root of 99. So at first we are going to do some argumentations here. We are going to see how our square roots are actually bounded in this problem. And n is a positive integer, meaning we need to round stuff up and down in the process. I mean, if we take a look, 3, what are the nearest perfect squares? I mean, 3 is greater than 1, obviously. 1 is a perfect square. And 3 is less than 4. 4 is the next nearest perfect square, meaning taking the the square root on each and every term right here is going to result in square root of 1 is nothing but 1 being less than square root of 3 and this is less than okay square root of 4 is nothing but 2 meaning square root of 3 is bounded between 1 and 2 somewhere which does make sense square root of 3 is something like 1.7 
I think something like this, it's, it's more than square root of two, yeah, 1.7, something like this. And we are going to go through the same process. What are the nearest perfect squares to 99? I mean, 81 is nine squared. So 99 is greater than 81. And the nearest perfect square to that is 100, meaning taking the square roots. Okay, square root of 81 is going to result in nine, being less than, okay, square root of 99, which is what we are striving for. And this is less than square root of 100 is 10. Meaning overall, n is thus bounded between, okay, n can be equal to two because um, n is strictly greater than square root of three, meaning it could also be two. So n is greater or equal to two, which is less or equal to, I mean, it can be 10 because 10 is already greater than square root of 99, but it could possibly be nine. Meaning finding the sums of all the numbers that n could possibly take, it's going to result in two plus three plus da 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 up until nine. And yeah, you could just simply calculate this or we are going to make use of little Gauss. Meaning what we are going to do is we are going to add a one to it and subtract it. Meaning this part right here is just going to be little Gauss from one to nine, leaving us in nine times nine plus one divided by two minus one. So nine plus one is nothing but 10. Nine times 10 is 90 divided by two is 45 minus one is equal to 44. And hence we are done. Now last problem for x to the x power being equal to 10, what is the floor of x? Floor of x meaning it's like a rounding down function. So if you were to have, for example, 2.5, the floor of that is going to result in two. But if you were to have yeah, uh, I mean, you are always going to round down. If you have this uh, floor of 2.99, it's going to be two yet again. So let us go through the process here. I mean, x to the x power is equal to 10. So let us bound x to the x power in some way again. I mean, one to the one power is nothing but one. Now what about the next x to the x power? This is two squared, is hence nothing but um, four. Okay, this is less than 10. And what else do we have? I mean, we have three to the third power. Oh, okay, three, three squared is nine times three is going to give us 27. Meaning overall, our x to the x power, which is equal to 10, is somehow bounded between two squared. Okay, and our um, three cubed. It's, it's, it's bounded like that. I mean, x to the x power must be equal to 10. So it must be bounded between those overall. Meaning overall, um, you could make use of the Lambert W function, but this wouldn't really help you here in this case be because x to the x power on those bounds is only going to yield real solutions. Now you can basically just compare bases and exponents, leaving us overall with x being bounded between two and three and uh, strictly between two and three. I'm terribly sorry. You, you can't have it equal to obviously because um, x to the x power being equal to 10 um, implies that those can be equal to. Now, um, if we have x being bounded between two and three, what happens if we take the floor of x? I mean, obviously, if we take the floor of x, x can be something from 2.0000 blah, 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 one, let's say up until 2.9999999, okay, something of that sort. Meaning if we were to round down our x, it's going to result in two overall. And this basically also concludes the last problem. And I hope you were able to figure everything out. If you are interested in seeing way more algebra, calculus, whatsoever problems, then I encourage you to try out today's sponsor, Brilliant, who were kind enough to sponsor the last episode here of Papa Flemish Advent Calendar. In less time, I take a lot of inspiration from Brilliant because they just um, are able to provide a whole STEM community with such a variety of problems, and I really appreciate that. Even from this Advent Calendar, two to three videos were actually problems that I found on Brilliant, and they were such a bliss to work through. Sometimes they were easy, just like the problems we did today, but sometimes they were also kinda hard and took a lot of effort out of me to actually figure out. And this is what I appreciate of Brilliant the most. They provide their whole community with a wide variety and, and range of difficulties in problems all thanks to them, be it physics, chemistry, mathematics, computer science, problems and topics, they got all of them and even more than that. 
Those problems, like mentioned before, came from the Brian community. And the community is built out of Brian members, obviously, which can com contribute to their Wikipedia pages and also their community and challenge pages. And I think it's such a great community because they also have to provide all the users with their detailed solutions. And I think this is something that everyone really benefits from. Even if you have doubts about your own solutions, you can just check what the community did and you can also vote if the answer was helpful or not so helpful etc. So this is something that I really appreciate just like with Brian's course concept. Starting up from easy problems they are going to get harder and harder gradually giving you an overview of all the most important topics you are going to need starting from high school life up until university life even. Um, on Brian I heard for the first time of Markov chains for example. Um, I mean, I scratched the surface at university already, but I never got into too much detail about Markov chains. And this is something that, for example, Brilliant um, offered to me, which I find highly pleasing. So if you also want to try out Brilliant, if you want to support the channel, if you think that this could make for a very nice last minute Christmas present, then make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. With it, you're going to get 20% of an annual premium subscription if you really use it. But other than that, you can just click on it and try out a big portion of Brilliant already for free. So that's it's a really great deal considering how much content they already have on their website and it's such a lot of fun to work through their problems and all the an animations and interactive um, and interactive problems are just really nice to work through. So yeah, give it a shot and support the channel this way. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, make a comment, channel if you like and I hope you did enjoy Papa Flemmy's Advent Calendar and if you did then definitely uh, keep being subscribed to the channel okay up until next year because more is definitely going to come i thank you guys for watching and i'm wishing you a great christmas ciao